So at Halloween time, we were talking about monsters. And last year at this time, we were talking about love stories. This time, we're going to put those two together and talk about what happens when monsters are part of the love story. And, well, yeah, you would do Twilight. And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the Host, and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... So last week we were talking about women in horror. And of course I left out some of the most famous. And part of that was a conscious choice. And part of it was... I was trying to get out of doing a stupid romance video this month. And part of it also was the fact that I had already done a woman in urban fantasy. And that video really speaks for itself on a lot of this. But there is a subset somewhere in between urban fantasy and horror. The paranormal love horror. Normally a vampire, but definitely not limited only to a vampire. And one that between the Sookie Stackhouse series and Twilight has really seen a resurgence in the last few years. But it never really went away, to be honest. So what makes the evil, vile monster something interesting to fall in love with? Something you want to fall in love with you? Well, before we take a look at that, let me tell you what I do here. I try to examine stories, because every story has merit. I do reviews as stories come up and throw back Thursdays every Thursday. This week, you're going to want to pay attention to that. If that sounds interesting to you, click subscribe, and we're going to do one of my theory videos right now. So first, let's start with a quick definition. What is paranormal? Paranormal is the supernatural. Paranormal is anything that isn't explainable. So vampires, ghosts, UFOs, you name it. And what is romance? Well, I covered that last year. Romance is the love story, or, well, sometimes it's just the fact that sex sells. So when you put it together, we have paranormal romance. What happens when you knock boots with a ghost, or knock boots with a vampire, or, you know, werewolf, or anything, really? So if you write a story, and the story involves some guy that falls in love with his intern, that's romance. If the guy falls in love with a fairy... That's paranormal romance, because of the fae angle. Same thing with, again, vampires and anything supernatural or fantasy-based. Now, remember when I said that a lot of women authors last week get pigeonholed and told, you should write romance? Well, here's one of the reasons why. Because as of right now, or at least as of 2013 when Tor did its little lineup of numbers, 57% of paranormal romances in urban fantasy are written by women, wherein men outnumber women two to one on historical, epic, or high fantasy. So, fantasy stories, horror stories, men are 66 plus percent. Urban fantasy, paranormal romance, women 57%. For some reason, it's what they write. And again, I'm perfectly fine with that. I just hope that when they get the chance to write other things, that they're allowed to, too. Because, hey, you write what you love, right? And let's be honest here. As much as I give the Twilight series a bunch of crap all the time, Stephanie Myers definitely is worth her weight in gold. She created a series that, by and large reinvigorated the idea of falling in love with a vampire. Now, I'm not going to say she invented it, let's be honest. There are plenty of other vampires to fall in love with that don't sparkle. But I want you to think about that for a second. Who was the first person to come up with this concept? Hey, that creature of the night that we're all afraid of, the one with fangs that wants to literally kill me and drink my blood? Man, is he sexy. I mean, I guess from a certain point of view, it's the ultimate bad boy slash bad girl, right? You sit there and you're like, oh, oh, that's the dangerous one. How many times have you heard men say things like, oh, the crazy ones, you know, the crazy ones. Or a girl that just goes after the bad boy. Well, this is the ultimate bad boy, the ultimate crazy one. This is a dark monster of the night that literally is going to feed on you. But there's something suave and there's something intimate about the idea of drinking blood. 
But again, since it doesn't have to be vampires, I'd like to point out that some huge percentage of women that get pulled have a fantasy about ghosts. And I don't have a picture about a ghost having sex or a ghost doing anything sexual. If you want that, my Google history is weird enough. You can Google it yourself this time. Go ahead. Just type in ghost sex. I'm sure there's an entire series of websites that I would not be able to unsay. But if you remember correctly, back when I covered genre, I said that there are some writers that think that genre is just where you put the book on the shelf. And there are others that think it's a very important distinction. But now, I really classify most of this as just urban fantasy. At the end of the day, a modern fantasy story with a vampire doesn't need to be horror. It can be romance. It can be comedy. Just like a superhero movie can be a action, or it can be a western, or it could be a spy thriller. At the end of the day, the fact that this is romance doesn't change anything. And again, it's not like weird supernatural things don't happen in sexualized ways in other mediums, too. But okay, let's take a step back here and really look at this genre, though. The paranormal romance says that most of the time nowadays in the books, it's a woman falling for a supernatural guy, although not always. Plenty of the characters in several of the anthologies that I've been reading have the woman be the supernatural, the woman's the vampire, the woman's the time traveler that can be telekinetic and empathic, the woman's the fairy is a very common one, the woman's the werewolf is one of the ones I read, that is pretty cool, but at the end of the day... I want to talk about what started me down the road to urban fantasy again for a second. And the fact that in those cases, the guys fell in love with the supernatural beings. In fact, with the popularity out there, I cannot for the life of me believe that I Dream of Genie and Bewitched aren't somewhere being remade right now, specifically with the concept of being a paranormal romance set in the modern day. Both of these shows are well due for a makeover. But since the most common version of this is the vampire, I want to take a look at three classic examples. Twilight, True Blood, and Dracula. Alright, so what do these stories have in common? Well, the vampire is older than the woman that he comes after. The vampire is looking for something, but the woman falls for him anyway. But what do they have in, that are different? Well, in Dracula, there is no actual love. It's pure lust. In Twilight, it's turned into almost like a fairy tale. And True Blood is somewhere in between the two. Almost like the story had evolved over the years. Like the idea that the man was taken, and then the idea that the man tried to take, but the woman was a little bit unequal. To the point where the woman had to actually pursue the guy for a while. Yeah, that's right. Remember, Bella actually goes after and uses her agency to get Edward. And then there's Jacob and all that stuff. But anyway, the important part is, is that the evolution of the paranormal lover entirely comes down to, in this particular progression, how much of a feminist angle you have. Now, that's definitely not to say that all of these supernatural paranormal romances take on a feminist viewpoint. There are just as many ones that don't. But, at the end of the day, as we get more women in horror, more women writing these, more of that perspective, more women directors, we end up with more agency, or at least in theory we do. And so, as much as people can make fun of Twilight, and God knows I make fun of Twilight, one of the things it does is it makes Bella fall in love with the, I don't know, 100-year-old, yeah, 100-year-old guy, yeah, the high school student. All right, yeah, there's still problems, but it makes her fall in love with him and her chase him and be convinced and ask him to change her when she's ready. Now, like I said before, there are plenty of women in horror that we can talk about, and Stephanie Myers isn't the first and definitely won't be the last. But she did something. She brought something about that was just a little bit different. 
So as we look back at how women have evolved from the victim to the hero to the protagonist, I want to just take a moment to stop and consider exactly what that means for the stories. And this week on Throwback Thursday, I just covered the TV show Charmed, and considering the amount of stuff going on with that that was romantic in nature, I think it definitely fits into this. Then next week I think I'm going to talk about marriage. But before I go to work on that, why don't we take a quick turn and ask you, what do you think? Do you think that paranormal romance deserves its own subgenre, or do you just think it's part of urban fantasy? And even more important, do you believe that there's a good market out there for these powerful stories about falling in love? But before you answer that, could you give me a quick thumbs up and a share? And of course, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, because we're approaching the 100 mark, and when we hit 100 subscribers, I'm giving away an Amazon gift card. Not to mention, just being part of the community would be awesome. Give you something to talk about, someone to share the experiences of a good story, be it on the play, a movie, a book, a TV show, a comic, as I just walk through the heart of all the stories we tell. I hope you have a good night, and thanks for watching.